Tonight's story is called A Big Hole in the Garden. One day, it was the middle of summer, and the little boy who lived in the house was at home because it was Saturday and he didn't have to go to school. As it was nice and sunny, he thought he'd like to go and play in the garden. In fact, it was really, really hot, very hot. And it was one of those days when you want to take all your clothes off mm. and jump into the water and just relax in the water, splashing about. But unfortunately, this poor little boy didn't have any paddling pool or swimming pool. So he was quite sad that he couldn't go to but swim in his garden. Did he, but did he, but then he found a big pool, oh, but, oh, and then he got a hose pad and, and, and put some so water in, in, in the hole. Good guess. Well, the boy looked out of his window, and do you know what he saw in the garden? Big hole. A very big hole. How did that get there, he thought. Well, he didn't know. So he went into the garden and took the hose pipe and turned on the tap and started squirting water into the hole. Very soon, the deep hole was full of water, just like a swimming pool. Then the little boy went inside, got his swimming costume, ran outside and jumped into the water with a great big splash. Oh, all the armbands. Luckily, he'd got his armbands on too. How about some glasses? And what? Sunglasses. Sunglasses. Luckily, he had the sunglasses because it was a very sunny day. So he jumped into the water with a giant splash. And the splash splashed so far, it went on all the plants, Daddy's plants and the vegetables and things like that. Well, when Daddy heard the splash, he came out to see what made a splash in his garden. He couldn't believe it when he saw a big hole in his garden full of water. How did that get there, said Daddy. I don't know, said the little boy. Hmm, said Daddy, this will be well worth investigating. So, Daddy put his swimming costume on and jumped into the water with the little boy and they had a lot of splashing together and making water and waves. It was great fun. And then Daddy said, Would you like to play with a boat on the water? And the little boy said, Oh, yes, please, Daddy. So Daddy said, I know where I saw a boat. We saw a boat in Manor, the big supermarket, the, the uh, big store which sells things like clothes and boats and shoes and all sorts of things. So Daddy and the little boy got their clothes on and drove all the way to the shop where they sell toys. They're called Manor. And they went inside to the toy section and looked for the boat. And sure enough, there was a large boat on the shelf with lots of things on it like... And that same, that same boat, but not the blue boat, which was a blue, and other boat... Which, which is different colours. Is. It was a boat with many colours on it and many interesting things on the boat. For example, around the edge of the boat there were, light, uh, iron, there were railings to keep the people from falling off the edge of the boat and there, was light, there were lifeboats which are used if the boat sinks so that people can jump in the lifeboats and say, save their lives. There were life belts which are like round things which you put round your waist if you fall in the water and there are life jackets which you wear if you fall in the water. Uh, also on the boat, they had an anchor. An anchor is a great big metal thing with spikes on the end like that, which you throw overboard with it on a chain and it anchors itself to the ground if you don't want to go anywhere. If you want a boat to stay still and not drift away with the water, you throw it out, drop the anchor into the water, it drops straight to the bottom and anchors itself on the rocks at the bottom of the sea. So they had an anchor on the boat and uh, they also had some toy men to go on the boat. And what else did they have on the boat? They had masts for the sails. Did they have my boat? Yes. Um, uh, but I know what my, my boat looks like. But, but it actually didn't have any anchors on the boat. 
My I'm sure it must have done. They just perhaps we didn't see it. it My bum boat doesn't have any anchors. Well, you remember but, that well. But and and um, um, no anchors. But they bought they bought this the same for my boat. They bought the same with my boat. And the daddy and the little boy bought the same as your boat. And it was a lovely boat with lots of colours and funnels at the top for the smoke to come out. And they took it home and got into the great big pool, the great big hole with the, full of water in their garden, and sailed the boat from pushing it from one to the other and had a great game. And then they invented some stories with the boat. For example, the boat hit an iceberg and it sunk. And then the lifeboats came and rescued everybody. That was one of the stories. It was quite an interesting story. Then in another boat story, the boat had to chase some pirates. So it chased the pirates and caught them and put them in prison. And in another story, the boat went looking for fish and everybody had fishing rods so they could fish over the edge of the boat and catch fish for dinner. Uh, so there were lots of stories, Daddy. And the little boy made up about the boat as they played in the water in this very, very hot day. And the water was nice and warm, almost as warm as a bath. Anyway, like warm, like uh, uh, um, I don't. No, do you know something warm? Um, what did you say? Do you know something was warm? Do you know something that was warm? Oh, like warm, just like warm water. In a the water in the paddling, not in the paddling pool, in the, in the hole was quite warm. It had been warmed up by the heat of the sun and it was a very hot day, so the air was very hot as well. So in fact, it was good to go in the water because it was slightly cooler than the air outside, which was just too hot. So whenever you felt hot, you could jump in the water and cool off a little bit without getting cold. It was lovely water, and Daddy and the little boy played every game you can imagine. Just then, Paw Patrol arrived. Why? Plastic, made of plastic, this time it's toys. Why? And the Paw Patrol is allowed to go in the water. Now, can you name some of the vehicles used in Paw Patrol? Uh, 3D. Which one? Rats. Yes. What else? What other Greg? vehicles? What? Greg? What, what's that one which, which, uh, which is all much brown over him? Um, and he's, he's, oh, and he's, is he Drag? I don't know his name now. Maybe he must be Drag. Are you th trying to think of the names of the Paw Patrols, are you? Yeah. I was trying to think of the name, I was trying to think of the type of vehicles they got. Vehicles would be a helicopter or a this car or a bus. Be, uh, this uh, Mumble Paw Patrol must be drag. Must be drag. Drag, okay. The, 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 the one, I don't know. Anyway, so the Paw Patrol vehicles came, the police car, the uh, yes, digger. Yes. The uh, helicopter. Chase in the police car, a uh, sky in his helicopter, rubber in his digger, uh, no Buddha there. For example, all of them came, and because they're made of plastic, they were allowed to go in the water. Also, Marshall's his fire engine. Yep, made of plastic, and so he could go in the water too with Aiden and Daddy and play, splashing. And uh, also, Rocky in his recycling car. Rocky has the recycling car. And also Zuma in this in this boat. Zuma has a boat. Well, of course, the boat really loved the water. And Zuma loved being in the boat in the water. So the little boy and daddy played with all Zuma these... Zuma really loved the water because he's, he's a water dog. Zuma's a water dog, so he loves water very much. Zoom was a water dog, so he loved. He loves water. He's in his boats. <laughs> so, all of them played together with all the all the Paw Patrol toys. It was great fun, but eventually it was time for tea time and time to go in. Daddy didn't want to get out of the water. Why? Because Mummy said, 
get out of the water and come and have tea. And Daddy said, no, I want to stay here. And Aiden got out of the pool? Well, Aiden was the good boy, yes. He got out and dried himself and got dressed with Mummy. But Daddy said, no, I want to stay in the water. And Mummy got cross because he wasn't coming to eat his dinner. Then Aiden, like a good boy, went to eat his dinner because he was told to do it. But Daddy didn't want to. So eventually, Mummy came and got dra- uh, Daddy and pulled him out of the water and gave him a towel to dry himself. So, but Daddy ran away and Mummy chased after him to try and catch him. But she couldn't because Daddy was running around the garden in his swimming costume and Mummy was running around trying to catch Daddy with the towel to dry him. But Daddy didn't want to be jumped, dried. And finally, he ran around the garden and jumped back in the water. Hmm? Mummy pulled him out again and said, Come to eat your dinner. And Daddy said, I'm not hungry. Meanwhile, the little boy was sitting at the table like a very good boy, eating his dinner, not dropping any food, holding his knife and fork properly. Mummy came to see the little boy and she was very pleased with him. She wasn't pleased with Daddy. Finally, she pulled out Daddy, pulled Daddy out of the pool again and got, wrapped him up in the towel to dry him. Then she said to Daddy, Now, go and put your trousers and your top on. But Daddy said, No. So she got his trousers and tried to put them on. But Daddy sat down on the floor, so she couldn't put his trousers on. Why? Well, it's very hard to put someone's trousers on when they're sitting down. Uh, you usually have to stand up to pull your trousers up. Yes, and when you sit down, you, pull, you just pull them up, up a little bit, and then you stand up and pull them up. Anyway, eventually, Daddy cooperated. Cooperating means he did what he's told. He cooperated and let Mummy dress him. And then he came to the table and sat with the little boy and Mummy, and they all ate their dinner. But the best behaviour of them all was the little boy who held his knife and fork properly, who didn't speak with his mouth full, and ate with his mouth shut. Me? Yes, you. It made Mummy and Daddy very pleased. It made that it made mommy wear please. The best haver wasn't daddy. The best the best behavior it was Aiden. Me. Exactly. She- it was you. <laughs> and then it was time for bed. And also a uh, daddy no no also the little boy didn't um um also were a bubble waters in 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 his drink full of water in his drink, and also he did do nothing. He danced didn't nothing. And when Daddy was talking to Grandpa, he wasn't. He didn't uh didn't make the that didn't make some noise. That's what a good boy does. He's very quiet, especially when you're talking to Grandpa. You have to be quiet because it's difficult to listen otherwise. Anyway, after dinner, it was time for bed. So, Mummy and Daddy asked the little boy, Who do you want to take you to bed today? And Mummy and Daddy. And he said, Mummy and Daddy. So Mummy and Daddy took him upstairs. Mummy took him and, and then Daddy came up. That's right. Aiden let Daddy have some fruit. Let Daddy have some f- his fruit, and and then I like I let Daddy you eat your food, and then he came up, and then first Mommy tell me a story about Alibaba and the free fees. First he tell me. Uh, Aladdin and the genie. Then he tell me the story about Alla, Alla, Aladdin. 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 And the and Aladdin and the forty thieves. Aladdin. Aladdin. Anyway. No, the hi, Daddy. Yes. Not Aladdin. Uh, 
Mm. Oh, Aladdin and the Magic Lamp. Aladdin and the Magic Lamp, or your friend. And it was Ali Baba and the Forty Thieves, wasn't it? Ali, and then we read Ali Baba. And the Forty Thieves. Forty Thieves. Right. So let's. So after that, Daddy came up to tell the little boy his bedtime story, ready for bed, and pretty soon, the little boy started to feel very but sleepy. But now I want another story because a little a much quite story, a much a little story, which because the like nearly uh, it's nearly bedtime, so a little a much. A, 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 I quite a little much, a little story, okay? Well, we'll carry on with this one. This one's not finished yet. This, this, okay, you this, you this do the, this, this boy, you have, maybe this go here. Should we tell the rest of the story? Yes. So the little boy started to feel very sleepy, closed his eyes and fell asleep. But that's not the end of the story, as you might think. Well, Daddy went to sleep as well, but it's still not the end of the story because what happened the next morning, which was Sunday, Daddy and Mummy and the little boy all woke up and the little boy said, Daddy, Daddy, can I go in the pool again today? And Daddy said, well, yes, you can, but I don't know where it's come from. I wonder how that big hole got there. So the little boy immediately put on his swimming trunks and his water wings and Daddy put on his swimming trunks. <laughs> window if the if the big hole in the water it was there and and sure enough of the, the, the big pool over the water was there that's right but before they could go to the swimming pool mm -hmm. they had to have their breakfast yes mummy insisted you must eat breakfast before you go in the water okay. oh no said daddy that's not a good idea you should never swim with a full stomach Mummy said, I don't care, you eat your breakfast or else. So Daddy and Mummy and Aidan all ate their breakfast together and then they decided to go to the pool to swim. But when they got to the big hole, guess what? Huh? All the water in the hole had gone. Uh-oh. Oh, said Daddy. Oh, said the little boy. Oh, said Mummy. Where's the water gone? Indeed, said Daddy. Where's the water gun? I know, said the little boy. Where do you think it went? Maybe, maybe the water, maybe the sun dried up all the, all the water. And that's what had happened. The sun had dried up all the water and the hole was just a big hole now, very dry. Aha, said Daddy. Now the water's gone. We could get inside the hole and try and see what made the hole. Maybe we'll find something at the bottom. So, Daddy and the little boy took their spades and their shovels and their trowels and climbed into the hole, went down to the bottom and started to dig to see if they'd find anything. And do you know what they found? No. Have a guess. I don't know. Well, have a guess. Um, maybe it must be a digger. A digger? No, yeah. they didn't find a digger, but it was a good guess. They found a very large round stone right in the middle at the bottom. What's this? said Daddy. A round stone at the bottom. How did it get here? It was very big. Yes, it was really big. It, it, it was this, it was the right size of the hole. It was and right it was the same size as the hole. Because, because the snow was down tumbling in the garden. There's a big huge hole. Then they were put a water in it. Then then the, the sun dried out all the water, and then they went digging in the in the, in the, in the, in, the, in, the, in in the hole, and then they found a large stone because it went down in 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 the, in the garden. But it luckily, it didn't crash the house. If they crashed the house, it would fall to bits, and everything would crumble, tumble. But luck, if a big like a bit of, of a house will tumble down, it might kill all of us. But luckily, the stone didn't crash the house. So, where do you think the stone came from? 
Maybe it was a stone. Maybe it was a stone planet. It must be a stone planet. What was it? A yeah. meat. A what? A, a meteorite. A meteorite, indeed. That's exactly what it was. It was a meteorite which had fallen from outer space and landed in the garden with such force it had made the hole. But luckily, the meteor didn't crash the house. Luckily, it yes. didn't. And That's amazing," said Daddy. "We found luck, it. Luckily, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't kill the life of uh, all the people. Luckily, it didn't wipe out all life on Earth because it was a very small meteorite, not like the one which wiped out the dinosaurs, which must have been a very large meteorite. Yes. So this was a pretty small meteorite, but and didn't kill anybody. Luckily. Yes. So, but as it's a meteorite, it's very interesting because it has come from outer space and you don't know where it's been. Why? Because it's come from billions and trillions of miles away. It might have been travelling through space for an eternity. It, uh, but where do meteorites come? Maybe you, maybe you ask Siri. Siri. Uh. You want me to ask Siri where meteorites come from? Yes. Later we'll ask him. Okay. But actually, I know where meteorites come from. Meteorites come from outer space. They're lumps of rock which are flying around in space. They've come from exploding planets or from exploding stars, or they're just bits of bits of rubble which have gathered together dust to form a, a solid object in space, uh, or maybe a pla two planets have crashed together and thrown up um, uh, lumps of gravel, stone, rocks into space. So these things travel round and round in space forever and ever until they get into the gravitational field of a planet, like planet Earth. So when they get into the Earth's gravitational field, the gravitational field is the thing which pulls things towards it. That's why you're pulled towards the ground. You always stand on the ground. It's pulling you to the ground. So when it gets into the gravitational field, it starts to fall towards the centre, towards the Earth. So all these millions and millions of rocks are flying around in space and sometimes they come near the earth and when they do they gradually pull into our um into our uh, atmosphere and then start to fall to earth getting hotter and hotter as they fall and finally they strike the earth with at great speed and very very now hot now i know and now i know the two planets crash together and then and then and then some rocks they Coming up, the two planets are crashing together. Then, then, then all the rocks make a big meter, and then crash to, into the garden. That's what happens. Exactly, you got it right. So, even our moon, it's said that it comes from a crash between two planets, which caused the moon to be created. So maybe the moon is a bit of the Earth. I don't really know exactly, but I think it, that's what the scientists say which was made billions and billions of years ago by the collision of two planets, one of which doesn't exist anymore. And the other bit is now, a bit, uh, and the bit of the Earth is now what's now the Moon, which is a coagulation of many thousands of fragments of rock which have all gradually come together under their own weight, put each one attracting the other one until it makes a very hard planet, which is quite solid. But to start with, it was just clumps of rocks floating quite close to each other. But gradually, there's more and more of them got closer and closer until there was huge weight crushing the ones in the middle and sucking in the ones which weren't nearby. So, anyway, Daddy and the little boy have found this meteorite in the garden. What should we do with it? They looked at it, and Daddy said, It doesn't look very good as an ornament. Shall I bury it again? No, said the little boy. We have to call the science museum and tell them. Good idea, said Daddy. So they called the Science Museum, who came around to examine the meteorite. My goodness me, said the scientist. Do you realize this rock, which has come from outer space, is billions of years old? Can you imagine the things it's seen over the billions of years as it travels through space and time? If only it could talk and tell us about what it's seen. Well... Something amazing then happened. What? Have a guess. 
I don't know. Have a guess. Maybe the meteor talked. Exactly. The meteorite said, I can talk. And the scientist almost fell over with surprise. <laughs> I've never seen a talking meteorite before. He fell down in, in, well, he laughed too much and he fell down. Exactly, well, he was so surprised he fell he, down. He fell down with surprise. He, he, he was scared. This up and down. And then, 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 then the scientist. This fell to the ground laughing with, with joy. Like when I was coming home and then I lost mommy. Then mommy came up with bash and I fell down with joy to the, floor, to the ground. <laughs> That's kind of how it happened. He said it was more of a surprise fall. He was so surprised he fell over. Yeah. Anyway, the scientist said, Whoever heard of a, a, a meteorite from billions and trillions of miles away talking? Of course I can talk, said the meteorite. What do you think? And then the scientist fell on the ground again. And he said, I can't believe it. And you talk English? And then, then, then the little boy said, do you talk French? Uh, and then the little boy said, do you talk Chinese? Is and what do you think they, they decide? I don't know. Well, when the little boy said, did you little boy ask him in French or did he ask him in Chinese or did he ask him in English? He asked in English, do you, oh, sp do you talk in Chinese and French? Um, and the meteorite replied first in Chinese. It said, uh, and then French. And then the meteorite said in French, Oui, je peux parler un petit peu de français, mais uh, je ne suis pas parfait en français. Mais en anglais, tout le monde peut parler en anglais. <laughs> That's what the meteorite said. That's what the scientist fell on the floor again. He said, <laughs> he said, I've never heard a meteorite talking English or French or Chinese or anything. A talking meteorite? Is this possible? And he got up, put his glasses on, and started to examine it closely. And he tapped it with his pen, and the meteorite said, Ow! Ow! Oh, oh sorry, said the uh, scientist. Yes, you better be sorry, said the meteorite. I don't like being poked. So the scientist started to touch it with his hands and examine it. Oh, hee 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 hee, said the meteorite. You're tickling me! I'm sorry, said the scientist, but I didn't know that stones could feel things, especially not my hands. Ha <laughs> you're tickling me. Stop it, stop it. Of course I can feel your hands. They're so ticklish, said the meteorite. Now. Then, then, then the boy, then the daddy touched his hands and tickled because, because, because. And that because daddy's hand was too big, also the, the scientist too big. So the little boy not touch it, hand was more normal. And but but the meter didn't laugh because that was because because that was the size he liked because it wasn't too big. It was so little. Exactly. Then daddy? the scientist said to Daddy and the little boy, quickly, let's go out of the room. I've got something very special to say to you. So they all went out of the room where the meteorite couldn't hear them. And the scientist said to the Daddy and the little boy, you know what? I don't think this is a meteorite. I think it might be an... What could it be if it's not a meteorite? Uh... Comes from outer space. And can talk. Uh, a what? You can't think of what comes from outer space on flying saucers and can't talk. Flying saucer. Well, what would you find inside a flying saucer? Alien. So this might not be a meteorite. It might be an alien, as it can talk. 
but it's got no arms and legs. So the scientist said, I think it might be an alien. And Daddy said, no, of course it can't be an alien. No arms, no legs, no eyes, no but ears. It, it, only it was round. It's just maybe, round. Maybe it must be. It also got the glass helmet. Also has some eyes. It must, it must be. As um. I has also mouth and some eyes. And but most of the else, but his body must be flying away. It was only his head. It was head of an alien. Well, they all went back in the room and said to the alien, Are oh, you a meteorite? And the alien said, What do you think? And they said, Well, it's a bit delicate, but are you by any chance an alien? And the meteorite said, Well, uh, yes. I can't say for sure. Tell me, what does an alien look like? And so the little boy said, Well, aliens have very big eyes. Uh, and, and, green. and he's all green. And the daddy said, And aliens have a glass helmet over their head. Uh, and, then, and, then, and the scientist then, said, And aliens have two antennas sticking out of the top of their helmet. And then, the alien, and then I just said they're all green. And the little boy said they're all green. And, and, the, and then, 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 then the daddy said, they come from Mars, and the, then the scientists think they, 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 they live in the flying saucer. Yes, and then the little boy said, and the heads explode if we play music. Yes, uh, and and the scientists, no, and the daddy said, if, if you have a super sword, can kill the aliens, and the, then the and the scientists, I don't know. I don't know. So, so after they'd said all those things, the alien, or rather the meteorite, which was round, said, well, actually, I'll tell you what the scientist said. Yes, and aliens have got arms and legs. You haven't got any arms and legs. So after they'd said all this description of what they thought an alien looked like. They have arms and legs. Yes. So after they said what they think an alien should look like, the meteorite said, well, so that's what an alien looks like. Now let's think. Do I have big eyes? Yes. No, said the little boy, you don't have any eyes. Do I have a glass helmet? No, said Daddy, you don't have a glass helmet. Do I have antennas on top of my head? No, said the scientist. Mm -hmm. uh, then the little boy, and then he said, do I look like I come from Mars? Mm, not really, said the little boy. Then he said to the daddy, and do I look like I come from a spaceship or a flying saucer? Mm, I don't think so, said daddy. Then he said to the scientist, have I got arms and legs like an alien? And the, dad, the scientist said, well, no. So what makes you think I'm an alien? Of course I'm not an alien. I'm a piece of rock. Well, said the, the scientist, this is very interesting, a talking rock from outer space, never seen such a thing. Mm. I'm going to have to cut it in half to see what's inside. No, no, you don't cut me in half, said the meteorite, or piece of rock. Well, I'm going to do that. So the scientist mm. got, no. it, got his saw and turned it on. Bzzz. But just then, the alien, or rather the rock, out pops the arms. Pop, pop, and legs. And then a head, pop, with big eyes, colour green, uh -oh. and a big glass helmet over the top, and two antennas sticking out. <laughs> and the rock said... And then, then also, and then the, also the little one, the little, little rock. And then the rock jumped off the table and then, started to run away, because he didn't want to be cut in half. It wasn't a rock anymore. It was an alien after all. And it started to run away. Well, immediately the daddy started to run off the, after the rock. The scientists started to run off the rock. It was, and it the was, little boy started to run. It was glass. The, 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 the rock was, was, it was like glass. It was all glass. And the rock was look like a baby alien. It was, exactly. And they all ran after the, after the alien who was running very fast. And every now and then the alien would stop and say... A little song that they'd heard somewhere before, but they couldn't remember where they saw, heard it. It was a song which goes something like this, and nobody knew where they heard it. 
Winston is, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm an alien. Where have you heard that song before? Well, um, I don't know. Have you heard that song before? No. Run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the alien. And also another song about the alien. So they would run after the alien. Now, well, when fast you can, you can't catch me. I'm a living flying soda, but also a living Mars. That's exactly what the alien was singing as he ran. Anyway, as he was running away from Daddy, the little boy, and the scientist, he came across a cow in the field. The cow looked at the alien and thought those long antenna on the top of his head were bits of grass and thought, hmm, that looks tasty. So the cow said to the alien, hello, Ooh, you look very tasty. I'm going to eat you. No, no, said the alien, you can't eat me. Ooh, I'm going to eat you anyway, said the cow. Well, you'll have to catch me first, said the alien. He started running even faster than before. So the cow started to chase the alien, followed by the daddy, followed by the scientist, followed by the little boy. Pretty soon, the alien came across a horse. The cow thought the two things might be the grass. So the little boy asked to grow thousands of grass. There was like these are thousands of antennas. The horse looked at the alien's antennas and thought they might be some very tasty fresh grass. So the horse thought it'd be nice to eat the alien. So the horse said, I'm going to eat you. <laughs> but also, the, the, also, also the alien that was holding the glass in was with the baby, with the, with the, with the, with the head, with, with the head of a baby, of, yes. the, of a baby alien. Exactly, yes, that's what was happening. So the alien said to the horse, No, you're not going to eat me. Yes, I am. Nay, said the horse. And just as the horse bent down to eat the alien, the alien jumped up and started running again, shouting, You'll have to catch me first. So the horse started to run off to the alien, and the alien started shouted back, Run, 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 run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the alien. And then a fox came. And then the alien came across a fox. But the fox, but the fox was a clever also. He, the fox, as but didn't catch the alien. The alien never, never, ever get hurt. Anyway, eventually the. At the end, he finally he went back home because the, the alien was, was lost his way home in the flying saucer. Then he was lost, so he flew down to 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 planet Earth. Earth. Well, let's go on with the story. So the fox said to the alien, looking at how delicious uh, the alien looked. Now we look at the clock. Oh yes, it is time for sleeping, isn't it? My goodness me. So I'll finish off now, very quickly. The, the fox said to the alien, Come here. And the alien said, No, no, I'm not going to come there. You're going to eat me. And the fox said, Of course I'm not going to eat you. I just want to talk to you. Ha ha, I'm not stupid, said the alien, and started running faster. So the fox started running after the alien. But the alien never get, get hurt. But eventually... Because eventually, because of the animal dog, he, he finally got home. He back to his, to his planet Mars. Exactly. So eventually the alien came to a river and didn't want to get in the water. But suddenly he saw, by the edge of the river, a flying saucer. It was a flying saucer from his own planet Mars. So he quick... It, it, it was his own flying saucer. Yes, it was his own... Exactly, that's how he'd, what had happened. He'd been in the flying saucer and fallen out of the door and he'd fallen all the way down to the boy's garden making the deep hole. Well, 
Now he was glad to find his flying saucer there waiting for him because he could see coming very fast but not too far away was the fox, the cow, the horse, the scientist, the daddy and the little boy all chasing after the alien. So, so, so the little scientist was happy, also the little one, the daddy was happy to the little boy to the fly and get to his house, to his home. Because, because this is nearly at the end. Yes, so the f alien got into his flying saucer, pressed the start button, and just as the fox arrived, the flying saucer took off into the air, leaving the fox behind on the ground, and it took off uh, up and up and up. It went into the sky, higher and higher and higher and higher. And went until back was... to, and then, then he was, then he then pressed the button, made flying circle. So he pressed the red button means take off. The, bu the button means take off. And when t and take off tomorrow, the little boy and the daddy and the and scientists were all happy that the only found his way home. But the fox and the cow and the horse were the happy that the alien went up to, to his house at Mars. So exactly, the alien pressed the button to go back to his planet Mars he, in his he spaceship. He pressed the, the, the button means flying circles. He pressed the button, it means take off. Exactly, he took off in his space, in his flying saucer, went all the way back to Mars, leaving behind on the Earth the daddy, the scientist and the little boy who were all very happy that he'd gone home. But the horse, the cow and the fox were all a little bit sad because they couldn't eat him. And that's the end of the story. Because it only have a few grass for it to eat. And the fox thought it was some... It was some... What did fox eat? Uh, eat. Like, yummy. Well, like, fo foxes eat meat mostly, so probably the fox thought it was some sort of strange chicken. Yes. So he ran after the alien, thought it was like much kind of chicken. So he went off to, but the fox wasn't happy. Uh, that's what happened. Have a nice sleep, Aiden. No more stories now, okay. because it really is bedtime, because, okay? Because my, because it's a little bit time to go, because we do have some time, but we don't have the time, because nearly going to, time to go to sleep. Yes, because, good night then. Sleep tight. Because you must get because mommy must be me much earlier, but lucky, but the, but ne, but he didn't. So so it's so it's so it must be time to sleep. Ooh, yes, it's time to sleep. Can I listen to a story. No more stories. Now it's bedtime. Okay. Really, that was the last one. It was a very long one too. Yeah. Good night. But Ever. Almost lasted forever, didn't it? Yes. It's just like a ginger bread man with a fox and the cow. Oh yeah, it's a bit similar. It's got some similarities to the gingerbread man, hasn't yes. it? <laughs> hmm. But not the same because in the gingerbread man, the gingerbread man gets eaten by a fox. In our story about the alien, the fox doesn't catch the doesn't catch the alien. The alien takes off in his flying saucer and goes back to Mars. So that's the story. So it's a different story. But it's nearly the same. But I have never heard that story. Before. No, you've never heard that one. It's a yes. new one. I, oh. I've never heard that story. I didn't think of it ever. But... Okay, good night. See you in the morning.